Okay, here we've got to Return of the Sith figures. They're the Lava Reflection, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader. These came out in 2005 to celebrate the release of Episode 3. And you've got Anakin, or Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. And this is the duel at Mustafa. So, I don't know if they're translucent figures. They're more like they've been coloured to look really sort of burnt out and a bit, um, you know, like when they're really whacking each other with their lightsabers and stuff like that. So you've got Obi-Wan Kenobi. Okay, so about the light. And you get a piece of lava with it as well, it seems, and there's maybe a stand. And then you've got Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker there. And I'm sure you can pose these two together and they'd look quite brilliant displayed. So you've got Darth Vader, both of them come in star cases with a backing card as well. I don't know if these were available at Target or something like that in the States. So I just got these recently. So you've got Darth Vader, Obi-Wan, Lava Reflection. Okay, this is the back to the card. So you've got a picture of Obi-Wan on the back of the Obi-Wan card and Darth Vader, Anakin on the back of his card. And they look really nice, these cards, with the, especially with the special backing cards, and they come in star cases. And they're pretty cheap, you can easily pick these up on eBay, no problem. In the UK, you're talking about £5 each. So we've got the Vader and the Obi Wan there. Excellent figures. I've taken photographs so you'll be able to see the details of the figures better, but because the bubble is kind of curved, it's hard to photograph as well. But these are two good figures and they're a nice set. So there you go. Recreating the fight final duel between these two characters. Well, it's not the final duel, is it? Because they fight again in A New Hope. I'm just babbling on. Anyway. There you go, Darth Vader and Obi. Okay, here we got the. I guess it's 2006 or 2000. Uh, yeah, 2006 episode three. Uh, Greatest Battles Collection: The Royal Guard. So I'm sure this came out originally on a Return of the, the Revenge of the Sith card. And I've sh I think I've sh shown the red card, the red guard version. This is the blue version. So this is the Coruscant Guard. Comes with a rifle and a little pistol, and has no face on this figure as we all know that these guards you could see the face on them and it's on a what sort of card is this? a saga card and you can see there the blue guard with exclusive hologram figure so the hologram figure is at the back you've got a nice backdrop on the card a picture of Coruscant skyline and then you can see the back of the card so you've got Royal Guard Episode 3 Greatest Battle Collection so these are the other figures you could get and there's the hologram figure it's a red one it's I don't know if you can make it out it's Boba Fett and here's the guard and it's looking quite quite guard, guard like I guess and there's the other figures you could get in the range and then if we turn it back you can see him one more time and so about the lighting it's a bit dark he comes with a rifle and a pistol which he's holding so there you are the blue royal guard from episode three a droid action figure Sal Joban Yep, Sal Jobin, and he's a, a hero character, and he rides a speeder bike or speeder car with his partner, Jewel Dusat, and it comes with a coin. You can see the bubble's really yellowed. It's graded, but it's really yellowed, and it's uh, 85 overall. The card gets 85, the bubble gets 85, and the figure gets 80 comes with an Imperial Blaster and what's interesting about this figure is the head is half of it's got long hair on one side and the other half is shaved and then he's got his one arm's bare the other arm's um, 
covered and he's quite a muscular figure, quite nicely sculpted. 1985, I believe, yep, 1985, and it's a US card. So earlier I said I was going to show you this one, I said it was on a Canadian card, I made a mistake, it's on a US card. Um, so these Thal Jobin's quite an easy pick up, not too hard to find. And this is the back of a US card, so you've got the droids logo at the top, you've got the 12 figures, then 12 descriptions there, of the different characters, plus the three accessories, the ATL interceptor, the droid side gunner, and the battery operated lightsaber, which is quite rare, that lightsaber. And you've got the proof of purchase there, and all the 12 figures, and... Let's have a look at him again there. So, it's from the TV series, which you can check on YouTube. Just uh, type Droid Cartoon Series and you should be able to see some episodes. Uh, it's pretty so so, but I mean, if you're a big Star Wars fan, you might want to check it out. And there's the name at the bottom Thal Jabon comes with a black Imperial blaster and a coin which says Speed Eraser Thal Jobin okay so there you go Thal Jobin uh, I think I've done quite a lot of shooting today so hopefully I think I've done, that's the last of it all and so I guess I'll just say Happy Christmas to everyone and a Happy 2012 even though we are in the grips of an economic meltdown. Anyway, Happy New Year and Happy Christmas and keep collecting I guess. Though, I guess with the way things are, it's getting more and more expensive to do that. Okay, so cheers, bye. Okay, here we've got the Luke Skywalker, known as by collectors as the, the Smiling Luke. As you can see in the picture, he's smiling there. And this is from the San Diego Comic Con from 2009 and comes with this ladder which if you had the X-Wing which I don't have you could attach it to the um, X-Wing and Luke could climb up and yeah, I don't know if you can really make out but you can see that Luke I'm, I'm, I've done photographs as well but you can see that Luke's smiling there and he's posed as he's climbing onto the X-Wing from that classic picture from A New Hope uh, Jedi Comic Con there, San Diego comes with a helmet and what I think this is is the body of the VOTC or whatever the saga you know the one that came on the vintage style card in 2006 and they've just put a new head on it and maybe they've silvered up the the flight braces or whatever they're called the bits that we wear around the trousers because they're really silvery on this version and he's got his hair looking quite wavy and it's his legacy collection and it's got some little Chinese or Japanese writing up there and the bubble's a bit I mean the actual star case it came, comes in it's a bit dented but Oh, it was posted to me, so hence uh, it's bound to happen if it's posted in a jiffy bag. So there you are, Luke uh, Skywalker, smiling Luke from the San Diego Comic Convention. You get a helmet, lightsaber, the ladder for your X-wing if you've got one, and Luke there in his as he's just about to uh, either go and blow up the Death Star or he's just come back and he's so happy, pleased with himself. Let's see. And you can see in the picture there he's really smiling, looking really happy there. So, Vegas. Okay, we've got Luke uh, Skywalker Endor Capture on Revenge of the Jedi card. It's a uh, European card, so it's got lots of stickers on it. And there's the front and there's the back, you can see a massive stick on the back okay so Luke
Okay, here we've got two older figures from the modern era. We've got episode one, Adi Gallia with lightsaber and the red clone commander from Return of the Sith. Or Revenge of the Sith, sorry. So, let's look at this one first. This is the red variant, there's a green variant as well, so this one's got the red highlights on its armour. Excellent figure, comes with lots of accessories, a, a rifle, a pistol and some grappling hooks and equip various other equipment. Figure looks really good, has lots of highlights and looks amazing. Comes with a visor that can move up and down. So this is from Revenge of the Sith, Clone Commander, red, red variant, there's a green variant as well. Okay, here we've got Felt Tipern Trevag on an OTC car, 2005 Hasbro Star Wars. Uh, it's a graded by AFA, it's a U90, meaning U encirculated. It's card 90, bubble 90, figure 90, AFA graded. Uh, it's from the Cantina Encounter. He's a character from A New Hope. I think he's a goat or stuff like that. He comes holding a red cup and a pistol, it looks like. Um, it's quite a good figure. And it looks, there you go, he's got a double horned head and a background picture. So this, these OTC cards are really nice, I don't have many of them at all. Uh, the double stripe looks kind of retro and has a photograph there in the front, Cantina and so these are called post OTC characters and if I turn it around we can see Felty Pan Trivag, it says Felty Pan Trivag is a bounty hunter who tracks Obi-Wan Kenobi to Tatooine after the Clone Wars, but loses him. Trevek stays on the planet and becomes a corrupt tax collector in Mossa Isley. His species is called the Gotal, who can make can sense emotions and energy rays that many species can't. The trait that comes in handy for ta tracking and collecting tax, obviously. Uh, everyone's favourite figure, uh, one of the most important characters, Prune Face or Orimarco as he's known on Power of the Force 2 cards and we've, I've got two examples here both AFA graded so I'll start with the better of the two well for me anyhow it's the Trilogo Vintage 1983 Prune Face and it's graded AFA 80 card gets 80 bubble 75 figure 85 and I've already got one of these graded on a US card, that's an 80 as well, but the Trilogo version is a lot rarer. So here you are, Prune Face. Okay, next thing is uh, Han Solo, Power of the Force, 95 on Italian GG, GG card. So, I love these Italian cards. Gear Stelliari, Star Wars, Han Solo looking like he's been on massive amount of steroids uh, still I've got it for the card not the figure uh, I like Han Solo anyhow so and it says Han Solo uh, who can speak Italian Confusal di Assolto e Pistola Sperante so I wonder what that means it probably means come with the two weapons he's got, he's got his uh, classic blaster pistol there which you can see is a bit large and then he's got this assault rifle as well which is wearing around his arm there bulging biceps head sculpts not brilliant but it's not bad uh, limited articulation for a figure that's about how many years old now 95 and then you know back of the car 16 years now Gare Stelliari Han Solo Ubano uh, Okay, here we've got a Gamorrean guard from the vintage 1983 Return of the Jedi. Uh, it's a AFA grade 80U and it's the dark armor version. Sorry about the light, but it's gotten really dark. So 
This is a uh, quite a good figure for its time. It's quite probably the largest figure when it was made uh, out of the Star Wars line. Well, certainly the fattest, and it's a really good figure. I mean, nice paint job. This is the um, dark armored version. So you can get this with an armor that's more silver, or this with a sort of more slightly darker, darker tone to it. Comes with an axe, and is a really classic. Okay, here we got Hondo Anaka, and he's on his the first release card. He's a the leader of a gang of pirates, and is a Clone Wars figure and he comes with this sort of little uh, salacious crumb but a red version monkey thing uh, I think it's called a Kaiwaki and mon monkey or something like that and the figure itself visually looks amazing the detailing in the face is top notch the sword is excellent the cutlass I mean and the musket type pistol everything about making him look like a par uh, pirate and I guess this character here is meant to be the pa parrot so excellent fit Okay, here we've got King Gornish of the Ewok series. This is on a Canadian card, so it's about 1985. Comes with a coin. As you can see, the bubble is really yellowed, which is common amongst these cards. Unfortunately, the bubble's got a slight crack here at the top, with a little hole there. Nothing too big, but still. Go on, as far as you can. <laughs> okay, hi, we've got here, for this review, we've got a couple of Power of the Force 1995-96 Luke X-Wings, all snow speeder costume actually. Uh, they're both powder force, one's the orange card, but both are US. Um, they're actually the snow speeder costume, even though the photograph shows him in his X-Wing outfit. And I've done a couple of reviews, I've shown a Luke on a THX card with uh, that the European... Okay, here's the Jawa with its cloth cape on. So you can see that cloth cape's pretty much makes it look pretty different. You can just make out the glowing eyes or painted eyes and you can see that there's a bit of colour change to the plastic. So there you are, the Jara cloth cape, put it next to the big uh, carded version, the Empire Strikes Back version there. Okay, so Okay, so we looked at some 2010 figures and we've looked at some uh, a couple of vintage cards about the figures and now we're going to look at a couple of uh, a Saga Legends and the Clone Wars 2 pack. So the Saga Legends figure is the Space Trooper and this is a re-release. It's got a nice illustration there of the Space Trooper. This is the second version of the Space Trooper. There was one back in the Expanded Universe on Power of Force, which I still haven't got that one. Once I've got that one, I've got all the Expanded U Universe Power of Force figures. As you can see, it's a really good figure. It's really bulked up, muscular. Well, not muscular, but looks very kind of robotic, and it's got sort of flaps for flying with in space and a jetpack. And he comes with a kind of the pistol looks rather small in his hands. Okay, so here we've got a really excellent figure. This is from 2004. It's a C3PO. It's called Tatooine Ambush, and it comes with a removable arm, and it's on a Saga 
gold card. So it says a new hope on the side on the gold bar. You can just see it there. Um, sorry about the lighting. It's a bit dark. Well, it's autumn in England, so what to expect? Uh, though we've had quite mild weather, so. Okay, let's see if I can get a better image of Luke Bespin for you. There he is. Okay, so you can see it's quite a good out figure. Nicely detailed. Excellent. There you are, Luke Bespin. See if I can get the head without getting the... There you are. That's about the best I can do. There's the card. Classic card. Been used three times now back in 1980, 2007 and 2010. Still got to get that figure, the 2010 version. So, Luke Bespin's one of the really popular figures. Uh, so this is a Brazilian card, uh, the R2-D2 droids version. So it's just like the vintage, normal vintage figures, except it's been painted different. And this is the version with the lightsaber, pop-up lightsaber, and he's got a big red eye. And then you've got the quite a nice piece of artwork on the card. So this is a generic card. All Brazilian figure uh, droids figures that have come with the same card. The only difference is the sticker that they stick here, where it says R2-D2. Uh, you've got Blix there. He's the most famous Brazilian figure. He's probably he's most likely the rarest Star Wars figure. So the guy behind C-3PO with the greenish face, that's Blix. Uh, you've got Boba Fett in the background as well. Got C3PO and R2D2, and you've got uh, some added scenes here at the top. You've got Vlix again and Tig from, I guess, and then you've got uh, Jord Dusat or whatever his name is, and then you've got the Droid lo logo at the top. And there you go. I've just been watching a few of the Droid episodes on YouTube, so they're pretty definitely aimed at kids. Okay, so here you've got the back of the card, you've got the same image in the top corner, plus uh, the logo again, then some Brazilian Portuguese, I guess, uh, the figures that were available, you've got C3PO R2-D2, Sal Jobim, uh, Kia Mole, Keziban, uh, Jul Dusat, and of course the most famous is Vlix there. He is virtually impossible to get, and he'll cost a huge, huge amount of money. And you've got two of the vehicles that are available. You've got the ATL and the thing there, side gunner, I think that's what. Okay, this is the biker scout on the Power of the Jedi, and I've already done a review of this figure. This is the dirty version, and the only reason I've got this one is that it's got the white. One of its boots is unpainted. It's white still, so this boot should be have a brown stain on it. <laughs> yes. Okay, here we've got the 2008 battle pack, it's called Shield Generator Assault, and let's see if I can get better, it comes with an R2-D2 with sort of an exploding effect, like when he gets hit when trying to open the shield generator door. Then you've got the, this is probably the best figure out of the bunch, is um, the biker scout with the rebel soldier inside it, and so that's a pretty cool figure. Then you've got Han Solo, which is uh, the same body as the Saga collection vintage from 2006 with a new head let's see if I can pick up the head I'm not sure my light picking it up but that's Han Solo's got a new head I've taken photographs so you'll be able to see the photographs as well and then you've got Lieutenant Wren, the Imperial officer who says uh, something like freeze it rebel scum or something like on those okay this prototype figure can't really hold the lightsaber with both hands 
so you can hold it with one hand but you can't hold it with both like the actual production figure so there you are Luke Jedi Okay, here we've got a figure, it's not Star Wars, it's Battlestar Galactica. So this is from 1978-79. There weren't many figures released, but the TV show was quite popular at the time. So, uh, so this is the original Battlestar Galactica, not the new series. And this is the Imperious Leader. So it's more or less in the same sort of size as a Star Wars figure. Uh, the card has the picture of the Imperious Leader here, and then you've got the figure here. He's got quite a pink face with a sort of purplish. Okay, here we've got uh, two vintage card backs. They're from the 70s and 80s. You've got a Canadian Sam Person uh, 12 back card back and a German Tie Fighter card back from about 1982 so with a 2004 Hasbro Star Wars Hall of Fame Princess Leia Organa a graded 85 uh, it's from A New Hope this figure's a re-release it's a um, either a Power of the Jedi or even earlier figure maybe the Comtech Princess Leia I'm not too sure about this but you can see that it's got limited ar articulation it's got swivel head Swivel shoulders, swivel waist, and le legs, but the legs will be limited because of the plastic skirt she's wearing. Comes with a long pistol there, a bit too big, and a massive block. I mean, look how tiny that figure is. It's a uh, wicket. So, this figure's just been re released as well, and a vintage 2010 uh, figure. So, they are Wicket, Warwick, Warwick, Warwick Wicket. Wicket W Warwick. Shame this card's been mashed up. So, I mean, the only way you can make money on this now is to send it to AFA and get it U graded. But then that's more more money to spend, and you're losing the card, the Canadian card. Anyway, there's my rant for the day. Just be when you if you're posting stuff, send it in a box. Not, not enough. Revenge of the Jedi um, proof card. So this is from 1983, it's, and so it mirrors what's happening now with the Revenge of the Jedi vintage collection cards with the actual carded action figures. So this is what it all goes back to. So back in 1980, early 1983, George Lucas was going to call the film Revenge of the Jedi, and then he changed his name. To um, Return of the Jedi, <laughs> a bit slow today, and um, so this is the Bosk backer card, proof card for Revenge of the Jedi, and it's the same image that was used on the Empire Strikes Back cards, and it has at the top there Revenge of the Jedi. It's a 48 back card. It says Bosk Bounty Hunter and you've got a nice image of Bosk there, a transition bounty hunter and you've got the free knee and numb offer there from Revenge of the Jedi and you've got the AFA grade there Revenge of the Jedi Bosk proof card AFA 85 and if I turn it around you can see the 48 back so it's a Star Wars action figures collector 48 so these are all Star Wars or Empire Strikes Back figures and it says special offer free near numb figure from Star Wars Revenge of the Jedi with five proofs of purchases so even now you have to send in your uh, seals or proofs of purchase to get the free uh, new Boba Fett, the work concept Boba Fett, the white one and so this is it, a Revenge of the Jedi um, proof card. Okay, next thing is a Rebel Hoth Rebel Soldier Power of the Force, about 96 on a European card. Uh, I only picked this up because it was £1.50, so you can't go wrong with that. 
Uh, it's not too bad of a figure, a bit mus muscly, like, you know, and the legs are in a bit of a funny stance. Um, so, you know, in terms of posing, y y you're limited to the way it's already posed. And then, what I like about this is all the different languages there. You can see it says, um, Hoff Rebel Soldier, Soldier Rebel, blah, blah, blah. Look at that. all of that, it looks really cool. And, um, you know, nice group. <laughs> Okay, here we've got a Luke Skywalker Bespin outfit from the original trilogy collection from 2004, and it's graded by AFA, and it's quite a decent figure. It's got bendable knees, swivel waist, uh, hips, uh, slit cut elbows, swivel wrists and a twistable head so it's, for its time it's standard articulation of a, your typical OTC figure so these are known as OTC collection 2004 and they've got quite a retro looking card a really nice card actually so it's got the double lines just like in the vintage cards from uh, back in the day the 70s and it has a the way the name is done at the top is very similar to the um, vintage figures as well. It has a little picture there of Luke Skywalker in his best bin outfit from Empire Strikes Back. And then here it has the original trilogy logo. And then it doesn't have a picture on the back of the card. It has an actual scene from the film, The Empire Strikes Back, which is generally considered the most the best of the lot. Though I say episode 4 is my favourite. Okay, another look at the Princess Leia Organa in Bespin gown. So you can see. So I've got this on. I've got two of these on Return of the Jedi Kenner cards. And I'll see if I can dig that footage up and mix it with this. Okay, so you've got this is a um, nice Empire Strikes Back logo. Then you've got Bespin gown. And then you've got the actual figure. Let's see if I can get a close up of the figure. Other variations are the colour of her hair, some some are dark, some are light brown. Then the neck, that's the most famous variation there, whether it's painted or not. And the, the vinyl cape. So these probably were the last figures to come with vinyl capes. This, the, the early 80s um, Empire Strikes Back figures. And then you've got the UK grade, Rarity is 3. So, it's just slightly rare because it's on a German card, but this is quite an easy figure to find, nothing too hard to find really. Uh, it's quite a popular figure, so uh, they're not Princess Lee and Bespin gown, it's quite expensive. And then if you want to try and get the cr crew neck, then that's quite hard to get in the UK. Okay, Revenge of the Sith cards aren't my favourite. I don't really like them that much. I don't like the backing cards. I prefer other... I think these are my least favourite cards, really. Backing cards out of all the Star Wars ones so far. I mean, it looks okay, but I just think they could have done a better job of that. I prefer the Saga Blue Episode 1 cards, Power of the Force 2. So, out of all the modern cards, these cards are probably the ones that are my least favourite. Uh, what would, I guess obviously the, the new 2010-11 uh, vintage, vintage retro cards, the OTC cards, they're the best ever, apart, apart from the original vintage cards, but they cost an arm and a leg, so I mean you can get modern cards pretty cheap on eBay now, so this one might be worth tracking down because it's just the harder to find than the blue guard. Uh, average price in the UK for this figure carded will be about seven pounds, and then probably cheaper in the USA. 
so there you are, the red guard. Got an 80 because if you look at the, just there there's a little crease just around the sort of hang, hanger thing. Uh, cool figure though. Okay, here we've got two of the 2010 Vintage Collection Wave 1 figures and I've been really bad at collecting these, I've only just got these now so we've got the Cloud Car Pilot on the Empire Strikes Back card and Forlorn on also on the Empire Strikes Back card these both have the classic image from the uh, 1980s so the same picture as what they had back in the day and you can see that the Cloud Car Pilot's been totally revamped and modernised as a Zuckus, I mean Forlorn Obviously, <laughs> I'm a vintage collector, so I, I, I remember them in that old... Okay, here we've got a couple of those proof cards or sample cards from the SDCC, San Diego Comic Convention. So this is Darth Vader from the 2010 collection. And it's a nice card. It's on the Empire Strikes Back logo with the original Darth Vader picture with the Kenner logo there. And it has a picture of the original figure there from 1980. And then the other figures on the range. And this is just a proof card, super sample card. So the only difference I've, I've been told is that this is blacked out. So there you are, and then that's the Darth Vader sample card. And you can pick these up quite cheap on eBay. So that's your Darth Vader sample card. Okay, this is our Han Solo from 19. 78. It's a big head Han Solo and it's on a 20 back H card. I only know that because it says at the bottom because uh, of the AFA label. So this has got the free Boba Fett offer so just like the new vintage figures. Okay so the reason why uh my channel is called MKM Films. Is that I, me and my friends, we sort of used to make videos together, and that's what we used to call ourselves MKM. So the K is my name, and then the M and the M, the other M's are two other characters. But I've sort of, so I've used that chat name on YouTube, and I can't change it. So, but I mean, it's quite an okay, it's an okay name. Uh, and you know. I tend to do a lot of Star Wars stuff, I do modern stuff, plus there's a lot of stuff from the 80s, which is my favourite stuff, so, you know, hopefully there's something on my channel that will, um, you know, interest you. Uh, I've probably got some of the longest videos there, I tend to edit on YouTube as well, so I just put loads of videos together that I've already made, and just stick them, stack them all together, so... I've got some really long videos on YouTube. Uh, also, I reckon maybe perhaps one of the weirdest places to do a Star Wars review from would be in a graveyard, which I've, I've done that twice. The first time in 2010 and then uh, earlier this summer. And then other things I do, I make other proper short films as well. So, I mean, it's not just Star Wars. I, I mean, that's more my hobby. And then you know, I mean when I get time and I can find someone to act in my terrible film, like, like Stalin and Ho, Ho and all that sort of stuff, so, you know, anyway, cheers.
Okay, here we've got a Jawa on an Empire Strikes Back card. It's a US release, Kenner, and it has the Star Wars Display Arena offer. And you've got the little Jawa in the cloth cape. Obviously, everyone knows about the vinyl cape Jawa, which is like a holy grail of. Okay, this is Sora Bulk, and he's on a Saga collection card from about 2006. And I'm sorry about the light, but it's getting really dark now. And he's a Jedi from Attack of the Clones. I've taken photographs, so you'll be able to see the photographs much better, but because the light's just getting really bad at the moment. And I've got like two or three lights on already, and it's still not really thing picking it up. So you got the jet he's a weak a Jedi here and he comes with a blue lightsaber and it's a quite a good figure. The only reason I got it is because it was so cheap. It was five pounds. The winning bid was on eBay and then the post of the packaging was about three or four pounds. I was trying to win on the stuff else as well I got outbid because that was a cheap. So you're talking about I mean to get this to get pay for AFA is about twenty quid. So you know not a high grade but it's still not bad it uh, tells you there fighting that has erupted in Genosis execution arena Sora Bulk is one of the task force of 200 sent to save Obi-Wan Kenobi Anakin Skywalker and Padme Adama from the execution Sora uses his Jedi skills to destroy attacking battle droids and to protect his friends in the end he is one of the few survivors of this fierce conflict Okay, this is Admiral Akbar on the Return of the Jedi 65 bat, made in Taiwan, 1983. Uh, he was offered as a free figure back in those days, a mail-in, and lots of cards have that information on the back. Uh, two variations of the figure, just to do with the colour of the vest, either it's that sort of greyish colour or a beige colour. Uh, otherwise, there's no variations really. Uh, comes with this sort of command stick. Just been re-released in the VOT, vin well, the Vintage Collection, the 2010-2011 version, which is a much better figure with the same sort of style card. Uh, this was sold in England because it's got its price sticker still on it, one pound seventy-five. So lots of American cards are sold over here. Uh, that's your Admiral Akbar. I got mine as a mail ray back in the 1982-83 and he says famous line of Admiral Akbar is it, it Okay here we've got I already showed this one this is a 1980 Kenner sort of battery operated two lightsaber toothbrush and you can see that I just got this one which is uh, that one was mine from childhood this one so that I've always had this one so my uncle sent me that from Australia and then this one is the first version of the toothbrush so this is came out would have come out a couple of years earlier and this is the Star Wars um, logo version so you can see the slight differences like the back this is a brighter blue the uh, lightsaber switch and the uh, Internal me mechanics are a different colour, and on that one it's red, here it's yellow, and the sort of internal stickers are different. So here they, you can see, whereas here they're a bit more futuristic. Okay, so this is the Star Wars one. Uh, it's not as good as the Empire Strikes Back one, because you've just got this massive logo there, and then just a few pictures at the bottom. So they're quite interesting pictures, you've got Han Solo there. See <laughs> still works, it's still in good nick, and I played with it a lot back in the, when I was a kid, so it's done really well, this little droid. So that's the loose power droid, and behind it is the carded um, 77 back US Kenner card, easy find.
if you want to get this on a 21 back or 20 back you're going to pay quite about four times as much five times maybe so it's up to you whether you're going to get that so that's the power droid cheers he looks like a solid character like a solid because he was always portrayed as being a bit drunk in the <laughs> not that i can say anything because uh I had a bit of a hangover this morning myself, so you know, um, not sure how I got home or anything like that. <laughs> oh dear. So, you know, and so he was a bit, there he is having a nice drink. That was, well, you know, three, there's three drinks at work last night. That was a big mistake for me because, uh, you know, I felt pretty sick this morning, but that's my own stupidness. So here you got Yak Face. I wasn't sick though, but. You know, uh, there's Jack Face, uh, C3PO, and the drunk Reese. And it says here, even with a court full of conspirators, Jabba the Hutt never suspected Reese as a potential assassin. Reese cut a deal with the Empire to destroy Jabba, but fate would save that role for Princess Leia. It's got other figures there: Gamorrean guards, the Tarkin, Luke and Ceremonial, two creature sets, and other stuff like that. And how to get the actual free freeze frame uh, binocular thing and then you've got the figure again there he is, Reeves, excellent figure <laughs> okay here we've got the 2005 post OTC um, sand trooper Tatooine search uh, out of all the these this range of figures, this is one of the hardest to find, if not the hardest to find. So this one is tricky to find. Um, it says Sand Trooper there in a sort of retro style, stuck on the bubble. And then you've got the figure here, which I believe is a repaint of the 2001 uh, Power of the Jedi Sand Trooper. Okay, so that's your black hole figure, 1979-80, Disney, Mego, and there's the Sentry, looks pretty cool, so there you are, not Star Wars, black hole, okay, if you like this, rate and subscribe, cheers, thanks for watching, bye. <laughs> Okay, here we've got two Clatoos. You've seen this one before. This is the Tri Logo Miss card. So it's got the regular Clatoo from 1983 on the Tri Logo card. And I, I, I just did a re recent review of that. And then here we've got a Clatoo on a 77 back US card. And you can see that the bubble's quite yellow. The card's quite nice has a little bit of sticker residue in the top corner and on the back you can see it's a 77 back which is a US very common card so you're talking about ungraded a carded example of this Katu on Palatoil uh, Kenner card starting from about 20 quid ok here we've got Princess Leia on Power of the Force 95 European card and but oh the battery's about to run out on the camera oh dear so we've got Princess Leia showing this figure before without the only big thing about this is it's got a THX leaflet there so that's what makes this a bit rarer is that they put THX le uh, leaflets in there for the 95 release of the VHS video cassettes of the original three films Be dotted about. Yeah. Uh, there's his back ratio. Yeah. I would have, 
if I had more space than Carol would have worn. Okay, here we've got. We looked at a Revenge of the of the Jedi card from 2011. This is the real thing. This is from 1983. This is a Luke Hoff card, Luke Skywalker, and it's a Revenge of the Jedi card. It's AFA gra graded. So these are. This stems from originally Lu George Lucas. Everyone knows this anyhow, but George Lucas was going to call cool Return of the Jedi, Revenge of the Jedi, but then he had second thoughts. But by then, Ken Kenner had already developed the Revenge of the Jedi logo for these cards. And so now these are highly prized by... Okay, here we've got um, Salacious Crumb from the Jabba the Hutt playset from 1983. So, here it is. Made in Hong Kong. 1983. So there you are. Salacious Crumb. It comes with a little tail. I'm sure this is pretty similar to the new um, Salacious Crumb that's been released. So there you are. Salacious Crumb. Okay, one more look at the Canadian droids and Ewok figure, Kia Mole and the Duloc Scout. Uh, these figures didn't really sell very well, so after the Return of the Jedi line and the Power of the Force line, uh, Kenner tried to keep Star Wars going, but by 1985 every everyone was getting into computer games, and well, I certainly did, and so I lost interest. So these are the sort of the dying embers of the sort of vintage Star Wars line. Not everyone collects these. Some people don't consider these worth collecting. I, I, I've only recently started collecting these ones, so you know, and they're still not too expensive. Some are, I mean, like Vlix is a cost of fortune, but some of these these ones aren't too too. They're not going to break the bank, as they say. So, that's, and they're both Canadian. So these are both my first Canadian droids and my first Canadian Ewok. So there you are. Time to say... Okay, Happy New Year. I've finally got the Gamorrean Guard, so this is a look at it. Got it at Toys R Us in Merton for about £8.99. It was the only one there, and it's a... Well, so many people have done reviews of this figure, it's probably the best of the vintage, vintage 2010 collection. Excellent figure, as you can see the detailing on the face. And it comes with three accessories and the famous fur skirt. It's a really good figure. So let's have a look at it. On a Kenner logo card. It's a European card, so it's got stickers on it, a sticker on the back. Excellent figure. Highly recommend it if you can track it down. So they're saying that there's more of these going to be available, but it's still a hard ticket to find. I only found it in December 2011, so really good figure. Okay, this is the back of the card, so it's the Gamorrean Guard, and it has the European sticker stuck on it, which can be pulled off, and but I'll probably leave it on. So you can't see any details of the figure, just the well the sticker in all the languages on it so there's the Gamorrean Guard which is VC21 Winter's Collection 21 and it's still a hard find this figure I went to Toys R Us again the same Toys R Us yesterday and there, were, there was none of these there so that's the Vintage Collection Gamorrean Guard okay one more look at the Gamorrean Guard I'll take some photographs as well excellent figure, exactly the same card as 
back in the 1983. I've got lots of these carded from 1983. And I've also got on YouTube a really rare Gamma Ring Guard carded sample, which you can check on my channel. So there you are. One more look at the excellent, superb figure, Gamma Ring Guard. Highly recommend if you can find it in in the UK. I know it's on eBay, but on eBay it's about 30 quid, so it's better to try and see if you can find it for about eight, nine pounds. There you go, Gamma Ring Guard on a retro style card. Highly recommend this figure. Excellent. Figures basically a work of. Okay, here we've got Regin Tilly's on the V. O Vintage Collection card back and it's on a Return of the Jedi card and this one is hard to find so as soon as I saw it I picked it up and you know it was uh, £8.99 at Toys R Us in Merton and it's a great figure comes with a, a red helmet with the proper paint scheme on it and I think I've seen a few reviews of this and they say that the fit body is of a Luke Skywalker X-Wing pilot and as you can see it still looks pretty cool and this is a hard to find figure so if you can find it, buy it. Wedge Antilles and Return of the Jedi card and it comes, it's a European sticker version, I took the sticker off off the back and as you can see a picture of Wedge and the f other figures in the range they've crossed out here the barcode and the sticker was quite easy to come off and there you are this one is VC Vintage Collection 28 Wedge Antilles and we'll have one more look at the figure oops it's a um, good picture of Reg on the card and the figure is though it's a kit bash is a good figure with a new head sculpt I, I believe of Wedge Antilles and there's the helmet which is, looks pretty awesome and he comes with a blaster pistol and there you are it's hard to find this figure so if you see him in the shop pick him up Okay, here we've got the Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight Endor capture, and it's on a Revenge of the Jedi card. And I got this just before Christmas, and it's cost me five quid on eBay plus about one pound fifty um, PMP. And unfortunately, it got a little bit creased in, in the posting. You can just see the dent there, but it's a really good figure, and. This is on its revenge card, so you know this harkens back to the 1983 when Revenge of the Jedi was being to toted as the original name for the film. So there you are, Luke Skywalker comes with a green lightsaber, lightsaber hilt, I think, and a handcuff. And this figure is very well articulated, looks looks the business, and. This is the second card back picture. It was originally released on a Return Jedi card with the um, as Luke Jedi Knight with the original picture from 1983 on the card. So there you go. This is VC23. It's got a European sticker on the back and a sticker here and here as well, which is for Europe. So for five quid you can't complain, and the card looks really good, the picture's cool, plus the figure is excellent as well. So you've got Luke Jedi Knight, or Luke Endor Capture as he's called here, and this figure has articulation in the wrist, in that they turn, rotate clockwise and anti-clockwise, plus they also bend as well at the wrist, so you can see why his wrist there looks a bit fat that's just because of the joints they put in there. So this is an excellent figure, highly recommend it for, if you can get it for this cheap, especially on a Revenge of the Jedi card. 
So there you go, Luke Skywalker Endor Capture. Okay, here I bought this yesterday. It's the Phantom Menace on a vintage style card. It's the Naboo Royal Guard, and this is an excellent figure. And I was quite pleased. It cost seven pounds ninety-nine. It was the only one at Toys R Us in Merton. I went there yesterday, and but this was the only one up figure I bought, as I'm trying to be a bit more frugal in what I spend on at the moment because I've been spending way too much especially last year I went a bit crazy so I've got to really try and cut down on the amount I spend on Star Wars stuff so you've got the Naboo Royal Guard and the figure is excellent looks a bit like a rebel blockade runner soldier and comes in a really the upper upper chest is really detailed I saw about the lighting and the trousers are red articulation of this figure looks really good comes with the correct weapon which is the Naboo blaster and the helmet comes off the helmet's got sort of blue and yellowish highlights I'll take photographs as well so you can see it better the figure the card looks amazing you've got two Naboo soldiers running at us and if I turn the back you can see it's got the um, European stick on it so it's a shame because you can't really see the back of the card which is really um, done in a retro style but there'll be plenty of video videos of this on YouTube so you can see that on YouTube it's, it's sort of look very reminiscent of the old vintage 1978-79 20, 21 backs so the back of this card is excellent as well you can see there the Leo and uh, Luke uh, Kenner, Kenner design there with the retro double stripes and this is VC83 this figure and let's see if we can get a better picture of the, the blue guard the upper upper body torso the, the detailing is excellent on that figure so highly recommend this one Nabu Royal Guard first Nabu Royal Guard I've got I've got the Royal um, security on episode one card but this is the first royal guard I've got excellent figure first phantom menace figure I've got from the this current lineup I've got loads of the red carded ones okay this is what I got for Christmas it's a uh, three model kits for easy kits Star Wars they're the came in one box I, I took them out of the box to take them back to London and it's the Y-Wing Fighter the X-Wing and Darth Vader's TIE Fighter and these figure kits are pre-painted so they're quite easy to put together and I'm gonna I'm sure have fun making these so this was the only Star Wars Christmas present I got so I've got a Darth Vader's TIE Fighter easy kit the X-Wing easy kit and the Y-Wing easy kit and they come with the instructions and I'll get round to making them when I've got some time so there you are you've got the X-Wing, TIE Fighter, Darth Vader's and the Y-Wing so it should be fun to put together ok ok here we've got a Bib Fortuna on a Tri-Logo Vintage card from 1983 it's UK graded it gets card 75 figure 85 bubbles 75 rarity one star and overall grade is 75 and it looks really nice on the tri logo card excellent figure this is one of the best figures from back in the day 1983 uh, really looks great has green lining on the inside of the uh, uh, coat and you know wasn't too expensive so there you go it has three logos, everyone knows about this, the French, the Spanish and the English and these are available worldwide in France, UK, Germany, Spain and the Netherlands plus the USA. So you've got the three logos in the top corner, all the figures that were available, 79 are shown, two Ewoks are blacked out, uh, a white area there where the barcode could have went, all the different manufacturers, Palatoy, Clipper, ben Benilux, uh, Meccano, PBB of Spain. So there you are, the original Bib Fortuna on a Tri-Logo card. This is the second one I've got, 
So there you go, really nice figure, picked it up pretty cheap and it arrived, I think I pick it, picked it up on Friday, so there you are, La Guerre de Cetel, it's French. Okay, Bib Fortuna, excellent figure, I mean it probably costs more to get this figure AFA graded, loose, than, it, than to get it like this, which is with the card still. Okay, so there you are. Okay, here we've got Clatu, the original version of Clatu, and it's on a tri logo card. And this combination is quite hard to find. This this figure on that card is quite hard to find. Uh, it's far more common on the Jedi cards, but it looks far better on the tri logo cards, if you ask me. Uh, has the three logos, the figure is really nice, it's a AFA 80 and it says card 85, bubble 80, figure 90 and you, you know on my channel I've got quite a few vintage uh, cards with Clatoos, I've got them on the, on the Miss card plus on the US uh, 77 back I think, so there you are, this is Clatoo on the US, I mean tri logo card, really hard to find this card and there you go, there's the back of the card so this one is always going to be a bit tricky to find nice figure though okay my battery's about to run out, hopefully I've got enough battery power to take some photographs as well to really capture the greatness of this card you notice the big difference with the tri logo card is the backing, the colour backing is different colour. It's yellow here on this figure. Or maybe it is yellow on the Return of the Jedi version as well, but I'm not too sure. But it still looks really good. So, Kutu original, grey limb version, and there you go. So everyone knows about the tan limb version, which is a lot more valuable. So, there you go. We released as Woof on the Vintage Collection last year. Same picture. Okay, these cards are a bit like what they're doing now with the Vintage Collect, the 2010 and 2011 cards where they're putting stickers, European stickers on them. This is uh, an international European card, so you've got all the different languages there, all the different distributors at the bottom, Clipper, ben, uh, Meccano, PPP, General Mills, and Palatoy plus all the other distributors. So this was designed to be, uh, instead of having all different cards for all different European countries, they just have one card. So there you are. This is just like what they're doing now. But at least you haven't got a sticker covering up all the different figures here. You've got the actual picture of the figures. So why, why can't they do that now and produce different, you know, a European specific card? so they don't have to put stif stickers on it. Okay, so you've got Clatu there. One more look. Excellent figure, excellent card, picture. Looks amazing on Tri Logo. And it is hard to find this card because most of them are pretty tatty. They get pretty beaten up Tri Logo cards. So you try finding one of these on eBay, it's really hard to find this one. So Clatu original on a Tri Logo card. Graded 80 overall. Nice thing about tri logos is the bubble stays are clear most of the time, and you know in Europe and England these cards are pretty common, so you know they they just look great. Sh shame that they haven't decided to bring back these cards as well for the vintage collection for 2010, 2011. These are the sort of cards they could do for Europe, the tri logos, just for nostalgia's sake. Okay, so. My battery is about to run out, so maybe I'll take a few more. Okay, here we've got Darth Maul and Saga Legends card from 2007. It's graded, it's graded quite high, it's a U90. It uh, wasn't too expensive, about 20 quid, maybe slightly over 20 pounds. And then you have to add on the postage and packaging. Okay, so it's Saga Legends, Darth Maul. Um, special offer sticker, so that sticker there makes it slightly more of a variation because that sticker's for the Clone Wars, which was a year later. And it says, get a sneak peek. So look at that. If you get a sneak peek of the Clone Wars, 
action coming in fall 2008. We excluded Captain Rex figure, so look how much we Clone Wars figures we've had since. So this is that before the actual uh, figures came out. And you've got U90, Hasbro 2007, Saga Legends, Darth Maul Special for sticker, and its card is a uh, 90 Bubbles 85, figures 90. And it's a really nice figure. This one's been re-released before, so the figure looks amazing, but it's not a brilliant figure in terms of articulation, And but the head sculpt's really good. The horns are, well, the new version, the 2012 Phantom Menace version, looks the proverbial dogs, you know, so this one's still pretty good. Uh, 30th Anniversary Collection, 77, 76, 70, 07, sorry. And then here's the back of the card. So you've got the same image on the Saga Legends card, the blue card. And then it says, Darth Maul, Princess Sith Lord Darth Sidious. Darth Maul has undergone years of demanding and brutal training to become an incredible warrior of the Sith. After expertly really wielding his lightsaber to prove his skills, he bows respectfully before his master. And there's the actual figure with the cape and holding the double lightsaber. So this is Saga Legends. And it says, a Zabrak from Iridonia, Sift the Prince to Darth Sidious, weapon of choice is dark double bladed lightsaber, characteristic of the forged weapon of pure evil. So, you know, you can't go wrong with Darth Maul, Boba Fett, or um, Darth Vader. Everyone loves these characters, so, there you go. 30th Anniversary Saga Legends card. And comes with a really nice coin, can't really pick out, but it has an image of Darth Maul in the middle with next standing between Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn. So, and there's a redemption form at the bottom of the card, I don't know what that's for. Okay, let's have a better look at Darth Maul. Okay, let's end this now because I've got lots more to show you massive haul today so U90 is a good grade U obviously means as you should know by now uncirculated ok I've just put Darth Maul back in his AFA bag so the AFA bag is what it, the case comes in to protect it and it's a good idea to keep them in these bags or get a magazine co or comet bags well you need the magazine size and then you can just keep it in that as well it's good protection and then wrap it in bubble wrap to protect it and then shove it in a box and then stash it away if you've got space that's a big problem here so I'm going to have to go store this somewhere which is uh, added the cost but what can you do because my flat's so tiny ok so Darth Maul in his AFA bag which most AFA things have when you get all of them and stuff like that and it's a good idea to keep the bag okay so let's get on with our massive haul Okay, hi, this is probably the best thing I've got to show you in this mega haul and it's gonna I'll break it up in on YouTube as well so you can see the parts individually. This is R two D two and the Return of the Jedi seventy seven back. So the seventy seven back, as I've said endless times, is the most common vintage card you can find up there. Maybe the second most common would be Tri Logo. So this is R2-D2 with the sensor scope, so this is the second ver vintage version of R2-D2 and it's f from 1983 and the figure's in really nice condition as is the bubble, really clear and the card is really immaculate so 
it says there on the AFA grading 1983 Kenner Star Wars, R2D2, Return of Jedi 77, Back A, Sensor Scope, Card 85, Bubble 85, Figure 85. So it's a really nice graded figure. It's uh, 85 all round, near mint plus. And the figure looks really nice. And it comes with a sensor scope. And you know, this card has been reissued in around 2004 on the VOTC line. I've got that card here to show you. I'll, I'll show them together at the moment. This was bought at KB back in the 80s, and uh, you can imagine how it's uh, shocking, how, shocking how cheap it was. It was 79 cents. So I wish I had paid that for this. Okay, still. I looked on uh, Brian's toys and all that sort of stuff and he's got the equivalent of this and his is about twice as much as what I paid for this so you know got this at a good price so sometimes you get good stuff in the UK a lot cheaper than in America so okay so it's R2D2 nice that it's got a clear bubble still because a lot of US cards the bubble tends to go yellow you can really see the figure how nice it looks and and I'll show you the back. The back is the common 77 back. This is meant to be a 77 back A. So you've got all the figures there, 77 of them. You can see Bib Fortuna there has got a red cape and the Lando Skiff, his boots are unpainted. So those are probably just prototypes or mock ups. As everyone knows about the red cape Bib Fortuna has been quite often faked these days. And then you've got all the listings of the figures there plus all the other stuff you could get like the Max Rebo band, the Ewok glider, the Ewok catapult and the Rancor monster and this one was made in Hong Kong there's the power proof for purchase in green and then we'll have one more look at this because it is a very nice specimen it's uh, as I've said so many times R2D2 with sensor scope and there you can see you can see just there that little blue bit there that's the actual pull up sensor scope I'll show you the figure as well loose which is from my own childhood days so R2D2 sensor scope with Turner Jedi card I've already, already got on YouTube a tri logo version of this not graded but a really nice specimen as well so there you go R2D2 sensor scope okay I've got this on Palatoy as well with Turner Jedi looks really nice but that's not graded I bought that years and 20 odd years ago almost, so you know. There, we can get the figure better. It's taking photos so you'll be able to see the details better. So, so you know that the body was just a sticker, but it looks classic. It's a classic figure. 77 back A, all round 85. So, great grade, high grade bought at KB for 79 cents. Okay back to R2D2 sensor scope we've got the original 1983 figure and next to it we've got the OTC 2004 in the uh, OTC packaging and this figure is still quite hard to find and this card is a reproduction of that card so you can see the similarities and differences so it says there with extension arm, now with extension arm on that it says now with sensor scope. And you can notice the Return of the Jedi writing is a bit thicker on the, the newer card. But I mean they're really good, it's a really good reproduction. And the new figure is incomparable to the old figure, this figure is such an improvement. I mean the detailing, the sculpting, this figure is a classic, really good, 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 excellent figure. And you can see the similarities between the two cards it's just the 21 years difference between the two that's the vintage and that's the modern and then if we look at the back of the card we've got the actual cards, vintage card there and the other cards that were in the range so there you go R2D2 on the 1983-84 card and there's the real thing So thought you might like to see both the original and the reproduction. So 
you can't get one of those, get that. The wicked figure. Okay. Okay, here I've got my original from childhood, 1982, I guess. Uh, R2-D2 with the sensor scope, 81-82. And it's just the basic vintage figure, the same as the original R2 with the solid dome. All they did was add that sensor scope there. Okay, you can see the stickers really yellowed over time. And But this is a good figure. I, I remember playing with it quite a lot. So, you know and has no third lo leg, has a screw there, you can see the screw and the head still clicks you can hear the click in there, a bit stiff ok and then the sensor scope, you just pull it up like that and there's the sensor scope so you can really see the sensor scope there so that was a new feature and that's why we went out and bought a new R2-D2 back in 82, 81, 82 because it had a sensor scope. Also the um, there's another version of R2-D2, a vintage one, everyone knows that that's the pop-up lightsaber and I've got one of those on YouTube, it's the droids version though and it's on a mix Brazilian card. So there you go, R2-D2 from my own collection, this is from my own childhood. And if you can, let's twist the head back round, let's put the sensor scope down. There's the back of the sticker. And then, head's a bit stiff actually. There you are. Time to say be dupe R2-D2, blue eye and a little red there. This is a classic figure. You can get this in 12 inch version now from Sideshow, it looks amazing. And... There you go, but this is the one from our childhood, so, you know, this one is quite sentimental to, to me, and there's the C-3PO next to him, that's the, my own from childhood as well, that's the one with the limbs come apart, I haven't got the little black bag that it came with, but they look, they look good together, C-3PO with limbs and R2-D2, so you can imagine C-3PO nagging R2-D2 about this and that, and R2-D2 just ignoring him. Okay, so here we are, R2-D2, C-3PO, my own toys from my childhood, then a recent purchase, well both are quite recent, the OTC R2-D2 and the original 77 back, Theo, uh, Return of Jedi 77 back, looks amazing. So time to say goodbye to these, hope you enjoyed this review, because these two, I mean when are you going to ever see these together? So you've got a great collection there, you've got R2-D2, carded, loose and uh, redone. So I hope you enjoyed that. More to show you, one more vintage figure to card to show you and then some more modern figures. Okay, so keep watching. Okay, here we've got a Tri-Logo um, Imperial Dignitary and this is already on my channel but this is an AFA graded version. So this is quite a common uh, Power of the Force figure, one of the easier ones to find and you know it's got the three logos, English, Spanish and French and also the bar, bar, barcode there which signifies that it's a later release and then you've got the figure there which okay it's not by today's standards brilliant but it still looks pretty cool. Uh, rather funky and the picture there of this rather ashen face uh, lap dog of the Emperor who would probably be quite a perverted character he looks quite sick and diseased and quite effeminate really so you've got the Imperial Dignitary there and you've got the grades there which are 1983 Palatoy Star Wars Tri Logo Imperial Dignitary Clipper Offer. That's what, what makes this slightly more unique. Uh, card gets 80, bubble 75, figure 85. And let's see if we can get the figure better. Okay, I've got this on Power of Force as well. And that's on YouTube. And we can get a good view of the figure and the card. 
okay so tri logos these days aren't considered second rate like they used to be back in the early 90s and there's the actual tri logo back which you've seen so many times because I've got a lot of tri logo on YouTube and what makes it slightly more different is that actual white sticker there or it's not actually a sticker it's a um, little booklet which was added to stuff being sold in Holland and Belgium and maybe Luxembourg and it says prizes, Star Wars prizes, you can get the Biker Scout pistol, the Darth Raider collector's case, the Raider laser cannon, the tripod laser cannon, Tebow and uh, they still had that around back in the mid 80s. So the offers expired in 1986 on the 31st of March 1986 and there you go. So this is the clipper offer. So you can find this now and again. I had one once before on an Anakin Skywalker on the Tri Logo, but I gave that away. So um, so this is the only time I've got another clipper offer. You get stickers as well, clipper offer stickers as well. I've got a Chief Chirper, which has the clipper offer on, over the Palatoy card. Plus over that they put Spanish PPB free figure stickers. So that's quite worth checking out if you're into uh, foreign variations of vintage figures, which I totally am. You could also, if you wanted to see um, Argentine Stormtrooper, or what else, a Glasslight R2-D2, can lots of Canadian up there, plus a particularly rare Canadian transition card, if you wanted to see that. But this is the Clipper um, offer, and so... If you've never come across that before, if you're a vintage head, then there you go. If I say there we go, <laughs> there you go again, I'm going to, uh, I don't know, but you know, I shouldn't say that so much. <laughs> when I watch my videos, all I say is there you go. Darth Vader, there you go. 12 back, there you go. All that sort of stuff. Not that I've got to do up Darth Vader and 12 back, but you never know. Okay, so... Let's look at the front again. Three um, logos there. Sometimes clipper clipper cards have little stickers as well, li like little round stickers. But this one doesn't. It just has the offer on the back. And there's the Imperial Dignitary. And Bubble's clear. So the overall grades are card is 80, Bubble is 75. You can see it's got slight denting and the figure is 85. That's because they use such large oversized bubbles, but the bubble at least it stays clear. If you check on the Power of the Force cards, they tend to go yellow. So this is from 1985. And it's one of the last of the vintage figures. Okay, so there you go. Clipper Offer, Imperial Dignitary, and I haven't said there you go, I hope. And then you got um, the actual clipper offer there. I'm tempted to say it, but I shouldn't. And Star Wars, the prizes. I've got that box, actually. And the Raider Laser Cannon. And what else? You could get Tebow as well for free, or Clip 2 in Skiff Guard. I mean, I wouldn't mind that Biker, biker Scout pistol, that's pretty cool. Anyway, time to say goodbye because we've got quite a lot to still review modern stuff now so those are the two vintage figures I had to show you that that was the R2-D2 and this and now it's time to go and look at some more modern graded figures without saying you know what anyway time to move on and stop waffling and dri ver verbal dribbling as you say so there you go oh I said it oops okay there you go. Oh, I said it again. Okay, Imperial Dignitary. Better say goodbye before I say you know what. Anyway, cheers. Bye. Okay, here we've got Senator Ask Ak. So it's spelled A W S A S K, sorry, A A K, Ask Ak. And as far as I know, this character's from Revenge of the Sith. Well, I know he's from Revenge of the Sith. And. He has also made an appearance in the Clone Wars animated series and you can see he's quite a detailed figure. He's, what species is he? He's a senator and the 
very similar to Riyi's and the head sculpt's pretty spot on the body's nicely detailed if you notice on the picture there he's got about six fingers all together the actual figure has only five so they've made a mistake there and he comes with a weapon which is very similar to Bosk's blaster Bosk the bounty hunter and it says there he's a senator typical Revenge of the Sith card not my favourite card I uh, got this really cheap, graded, it's graded 75 overall, uh, I think this is the figure I, gr I, I about day six months ago I was bidding for and someone snapped it up because it was going for a low price, I, I think I paid m for this all together about £7, so it's not bad because it's graded as well, ok it's not the highest grade, it's a 75 but still you can't, can't complain about that for an AFA graded figure and I mean the biggest thing with this is that at the top there's a crease you can just see around the hook and the grades are 75 overall, card gets 75 probably because of that crease there, bubble gets 90 and the figure gets 90 as well so it's a high grade figure and the back of the card is your typical uh, Revenge of the Sith card with the character there, Askak he's number 46 of the Revenge of the Sith line Askak is a Gran from the outworld of Malastare. Just before the start of the Clone Wars, he supports the Military Creation Act and was part of Chancellor Palpatine's Loyalist Committee. You can see the actual figure there with his weapon. Not that he would carry a weapon being a senator. And you've got other figures in the range there. And as I've said before, these cards are not my favourite card backs. I don't like the bubbles because they're curved, they're hard to film reflect lots of light but still for eight quid altogether you can't complain about this okay so that's ask ack nice detailing on the costume the only gripe I'd say is the hands they've got the hands wrong he's got more fingers than he had in the picture than it on the actual figure so there you go oops I said there you go okay so uh, ask ack Senator from Revenge of the Sith. Blink and you'll miss. Okay, here we've got Django Fett. It's the final countback version on an Attack of the Clones card. It's a Canadian card or a South American distribution card. And it has at the back of the figure the brochure that Canadian Canadian South American cards come with. So that's not an insert, it's just a brochure showing all the latest figures you could get has the languages in English, French and Spanish they're very reminiscent of the vintage Trilogo cards and AFA describe it as such, a tri-language card it's a Boba Jango Fett, sorry, with the firing gauntlet which you push into his wrist and it can fire out and it's quite a good figure posed in an action pose so articulation is rather limited but for the time it wasn't too bad and his costume is kind of bluish rather than nowadays they're tending to make the costume more purplish or lavender there's the backpack there's a little offer at the back bottom there to do with the fan club you can just see it there and you can see the grading there so it's a 75 overall, so yeah, I've got this with the Askak because it's also pretty cheap. This one's slightly more than the, cause, well, because of the because of who it was, so this would have been about £12 altogether, plus postage and packaging. So you've got Django Fett, and the grades are 75. Card gets 75, even though the card looks pretty good to me. Bubble gets 80 slightly dented at the top and figure gets 90 so the figure's a good grade and it says Django Fett Tri-Language tri Hasbro Europe so this gets the Hasbro Europe because it's been imported into the by, into the UK so you've got that little white sticker there which says uh, NBC Limited Trollywood Hearts WD3 5LH retained for further re reference so that means that this figure was imported into the UK European distribution and then you've got the three la 
languages that describe Django Fett. The bounty hunter Jumbo Fett, Django Fett is a shrewd mercenary mysteriously linked to the growing separatist army and that the unexplained assassination attempts on Senator Amidala. His battle-scarred suit of armor and thick muscular frame are physically imposing and hidden beneath his sleek domed helmet lies a, a, a coarse pitted face hardened by life of dangerous work and ruthless operations. Armed with dual pistols, a jetpack and a flamethrower, Django Fett is a mobile arsenal fully equipped for combat and it shows you what the figure can do at the back. You can push in the flamethrower, flame and it will fire out. You've got other figures in the range, and you've got Hasbro Canada, Long Hill, wherever, Canada, and then some South American distribution addresses as well at the bottom. So this is a Canadian trilingual language card, and it's been imported into the UK. So Django Fett, cool figure, um, final battle with the flamethrower. This flame can be either up or down, that's a variation there. This one's up, sometimes it's packed pointing downwards so so there you go. Star Wars. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Okay. I haven't said yet yeah, cool. Okay, Star Wars, Django Fett, wicked figure, easy to track down, very common. So pick this up because it was cheap plus it's graded so there you go oops I said there you go oops I said oops okay nearly at the end of this massive haul got a couple more figures to show you this one's an AFA graded 90 um, Admiral Motti on the Power of the Force card from 1999 Hasbro Star Wars Power of the Force Contech Admiral Motti and the card gets 90 figure gets blister 90 figure 90 so it's a good grade and I haven't got this I've never had this figure before I've always wanted it the only two other figures on this card I've had are the Luke and the Han and I just recently got an R2 D2 as well, but that's not graded. I need to show that as well. Okay, so this is Admiral Motti, and he comes with now with a Comtech chip. You can see the Comtech. So this is just before Episode One figures came out. So the card is very similar to Episode One card, except in instead of Darth Maul, they've got Darth Vader there, and instead of being green, it's that they moved to red with Episode One cards. You can see the figures there. It's quite a good figure with a twist in his arm I don't know if that bend in the elbow makes his arm a bit too long but he's grasping at his collar comes with an imperial blaster and he's a proper uniform there so Admiral Motti he's the one that well everyone knows in the New Hope he says that next to the power of this Death Star you know and Darth Vader gets a bit miffed about what he's saying and Vader sort of strangles him to prove the point that the Force is more powerful than a Death Star. Okay, and he comes with an Imperial Blaster, picture of the character on the contact chip, and we turn it around, we can see that it has a picture straight from A New Hope, Admiral Mot Motti. The senior Imperial Command in charge of operations on the original Death Star, Admiral Motto often disagreed with the decisions of Darth Vader. His outspokenness almost cost him his life when Vader used the force to strangle the Admiral into silence until Admiral, I mean, Governor Tarkin tells them that's enough. And then it says there, a generation has passed away since young Anakin Skoka began his epic journey as a Jedi apprentice. The evil empire has destroyed all remnants of the old republic and cast a shadow of oppression over the entire galaxy. Amid the darkness, a simple farm boy named Luke Skywalker ignites the rebel alliance with the power of the force to become a new hope for restoring freedom in the galaxy. There you've got the Comtech reader. Now action figures talk and the other figures in this line. There wasn't many, uh, the Luke and the Han, those two I've got, Admiral Motti, um, Darth 
Vader, Chewbacca, Stormtrooper, and Princess Leia. And there was also an R2D2 D2 as well. Okay, 1999, so it is 99. I thought this came out slightly earlier, 98, but it's obviously 99. Comtech Reader, which is more to do with episode 1. And here we have another look at the figure. Call it Bright Today. Nice card. I think these cards look amazing. And they're getting on a bit. 13 years old now. Admiral Motti. Should be too much. I mean, in the UK you talk about maybe 7 to 10 pounds carded and then graded double that. 20 quid. That's what this was. So. Star Wars, Power of the Force, Admiral Motti, 1999. Okay, my battery's running out, so I need to get going. I've got one more figure to show you. Hopefully, I don't want to have to charge this camera up again. Okay, nice look though. Nice and bright today. Freezing cold, but this figure looks amazing. Like this. If I can get a better shot of the actual figure. The lightness isn't too bad. The costume is pretty, looks pretty authentic. Limited articulation to the hips, the waist, the shoulders, the elbow, just to cl clasp his throat and the neck. Okay, so that's that. Let's move on to the next. Okay, here we've got the Naboo soldier in the yellow outfit and this is from the Saga Collection 2006, it's number 50 and this is a really good figure so this is a figure I never really knew about until I saw it on eBay and it was pretty cheap so I think this was £12, it's a, a good grade as well the U85, that means it's uncirculated it's graded for 12 quid. you can't complain plus postage and packaging comes with a quite a lethal looking blaster and he's clad in a yellow outfit and he has a sort of flight helmet and a uniform that's kind of padded or like a thick quilted material you can see the picture there that's kind of goofy in that picture there and he has little black boots looks reasonably well articulated swivel elbows not sure about the knees and has a nice backdrop of the Naboo hanger I just assume and what else is there the double Star Wars logo there ok the grades are U85 the card gets 85 bubble 85 figure 90 and it's the 2006 Hasbro Star Wars Saga Collection Naboo Soldier with Queen Amidala and if you look at the back of the card, you can see the actual figure there, the Naboo guard. And he looks pretty posed, pretty rigid. Maybe his legs look a bit skinny, looks like he's got bendable knees. And he looks a bit top heavy. There's the other figures you can get on the in the line. Comes with a hologram. And this hologram figure is Queen Amidala. And other figures in the range. At the top you've got a picture of the Naboo guards, royal guards, the soldiers, red and blue. So maybe this was, figure was just painted over for the TAC 2007 royal guard, just painted red. You've got other figures, and it says there, Battle of Naboo. Though Naboo is a peaceful world, the soul people of the planet understand that peace comes at the price of vigilance. Outnumbered and outgunned by the Trade Federation, many of the humans of Naboo step up and volunteer when it... Okay, I was doing a review of this Naboo guard, I mean Naboo soldier, but the battery ran out, so I've had to charge it up, and it's about an hour and a half later, and it's, as you can see, it's a lot darker. So we might be getting snow today, I'm not sure yet. I haven't had any snow this year. It's been pretty mild this year. But you can get a good look at the Naboo soldier there. Looks pretty cool. Holding his blaster. And let's call in the yellow orangey costume. You can see some sort of Naboo writing on his helmet. And this 
favoured well with the new Naboo Royal, Royal Guard that's just come out on the Phantom Menace line. So, cool figure there. Interesting picture on the corner. And, and if you look at the back of the figure card, sorry, I think this is where I got up to when my battery ran out. You got a picture of the Naboo Guards in the top corner there from episode one which is coming out again soon in 3D, next week maybe. I don't know if it's coming here in the UK at the same date, or do we have to wait? And the hologram figure is Queen Amidala, other figures in the line. Okay, this one, U85 I think, which means uncirculated. Card gets uh, 85 bubble, 85 figure 90. This is uh, 2006, and what was I going to say, cost £12 and then you have to add factoring shipping which was about another 3 or £4, maybe 5 at maximum so a nice figure though, Naboo Guard Soldier don't see much of this one on uh, YouTube maybe because he's sort of a nondescript minor character but still maybe it's worth tracking this figure down and maybe it was reused again for the 30th anniversary collection Naboo Soldier but they just did it in red instead of the orangey yellow outfit comes with a lethal looking blaster and maybe something you could track down I mean it shouldn't cost more than 7-8 pounds ungraded Okay, one more look, there's the side view, there's the back, the hologram figure and the picture there, and this brings to an end, finally, didn't help that we had that Lumina, my battery ran out, but there you go, Naboo, oops, so there you go again, oops, so there, I just said it, Maybe there's a condition called there, there you go tinnitus or stuff like that. Okay. So this is a figure that most people I don't think really know about. Okay, this is a uh, Han Solo from 1978. It's a big head Han Solo. And it's on a 20 back. H card. I only know that because it says at the bottom because uh, of the ASA label. So this has got the free Boba Fett offer. So just like the new vintage figures, this has the same offer. Well, this is the original offer. So this is for getting the original uh, missile firing Boba Fett back in 1978-79. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I sent off for that, it, I did the equivalent offer in England, so we would have cut the name tags out in America, you cut off, cut out the pop. This is the Han Solo, it's a 12, one of the original 12 figures, it, it was, I've, I've said this before on YouTube, it's the first figure I ever got. Um, I would have gotten the small head version, so this is the big head version and originally the figure came with a small head version I'll show you that in a minute I've got a loose version of the small head graded but I haven't got a carded version of the that Han Solo so this is the big head on a 20 back I've got the Han same uh, figure on a 21 back this one's a higher grade though this one's at 85 so the card gets 80 the bubble gets 85 and the figure gets 85 so those are the grades, uh, it's a 1978 Kenner Star War 20 back H, so if you, there's a guy called John Kellerman wrote a book and he's like described all the different variations on the Kenner cards in terms of stickers and um, printings and all that sort of stuff, warning stickers and stuff like that, so this is a 20 back H. So and you can guess where this was bought in America, Toys R Us, it cost originally $1.97 
that's upside down, let's turn the camera around, so you got that back in the day, it would have been a dollar ninety seven. Uh, this is one of the most sought after figures, I've got quite a few of them, it's because it was probably the first figure I bought, it's like one of my favourites, if not my favourite, the favourite, I've got on YouTube you can see a Palatoy Return of the Jedi Han Solo, you can see a graded 85 again, uh, Return of the Jedi Kenner, 78, 7 back or 79 back with the Anakin offer sticker or whatever print. And also I've got a tri-logo Han Solo with the alternative picture, plus the a German Empire Strikes Back Han Solo which is on YouTube, you can look that up. Um, what else? And plus the 21 back and now this one and this is the 20, 20 back H and then there's also the loose graded small head Han Solo as well so let's have a look how big his head is I'll get the l l loose one in a minute so you can see compare the two um, Okay, this is the original uh, Boba Fett offer, so we've just had it repeated in with the 2010 collection, and so that's a mock-up of the Boba Fett figure made out of the Death Squad Commander, and you've got the offer has been extended until uh, 3rd, which would be March, I guess, March the 31st, 1980, so I'd have been just turned 10 then and it says here a fearsome interplanetary bounty hunter a threat to the rebel alliance especially Han Solo a new character in the Star Wars sequel and tells you how to get the free Boba Fett offer well it wasn't free yet to cut out quite a lot of figure names and send maybe a couple of dollars to collect it and these are the figures you've got 8 there plus 12 there that makes it a 20 back this is a 20 back H, it's a 20 back H because it's got that um, offer extended sticker there. So according to the Kellerman book, whatever extra stickers and stuff like that, sometimes there's a label that covers that uh, thing up there. That is the sticker itself, it's covering up the rocket firing uh, Boba Fett and even, even the shape of the corners of the sticker will, see this one's quite square but uh, in some it's rounded and that would lead it to be cat oh, I can't even say it. <laughs> you know it mean it would be uh oh, I can't say it well you know what I mean it would be in a different class so it'd be a, maybe a, uh, a 20 back H a 20 back J a 20 back whatever D C B so and so that's how it goes Oh dear. Okay, so here you can see the loose small head Han Solo plus the big head behind him. So the original figure was released with a head like that and it's been called the Pinhead Han Solo. This was the actual first figure I got. I would have got had this on a 12 back Palatoy card. And I think in England back in 1978, when they finally came out, it would have cost about 99 pence. Uh, so this was the first Star Wars figure I had. My one's been vanished for a long, long time. So, you know, and this is quite exp an expensive figure to find these days. Though they say the big head Han's worth more on a Star Wars card. But this one's kind of getting pretty scarce now and there's the small head so with the small head though he looks tend, looks a bit more in proportion with the big head and they they never altered the body so the ha body now looks a bit small on, on the big head Han and he's got more of a mop top hairstyle and looks quite maybe a little bit more like Harrison Ford whereas this one's more of a generic representation and I can say that but I can't say categorization or well, I just did but you know um, and 
so I don't know which one because I had that one first but I quite like the, the small heads but I also like the big heads as well so there you go they both are classic figures oh, obviously there's been better ones since since the uh, 95 and onwards and I mean this card with the image of Han Solo Harrison Ford looks just it's classic classic and there you are with the logo Star Wars logo so there's the small head Han Solo and there's the big head Han Solo there you could maybe if you actually watch this on YouTube you could tell me at the bottom which one you prefer so there you go and the bodies are exactly the same no difference at all and that's it so there are the two major variations of the original Han Solo is just the head the big head uh, some have moulded legs as well this one doesn't so you'll have to look that up I can't. I think that's just to do with that whether the legs are, have been painted black or that they were moulded in black plastic that's, that's as far as I, I guess so there you are the two Han Solos small head big head uh, I think at the moment you can get these giant jumbo Star Wars figures and I think the small head small headed one version was um, a special uh, maybe San Diego comic convention or something like that so you, but you can still get the big headed Han as the jumbo figure so that's if you wanted to get a modern version um, if you want to get him on a vintage card, the best bet is probably trying to tra get him on a Jedi card. Uh, probably a US or even a Palatoy card would be, they're probably going to be a cheapest option. Or with, and that's going to be with the big head. So, but I mean, there are they are out there. I mean, maybe not in best condition, but you could be able, you should be able to track one, out, one down. So, there you go. Boba Fett offer this is a 20 back H and that's what it was categorized <laughs> uh, if you get the John Kellerman book that's that's really useful you can check the Kellerman matrices out on um, Rebel Scott Rebel Rebel Scum Rebel Scum yep so and there you go so that's your 20 back H Han Solo um that's it okay hope you enjoy this thanks for watching uh subscribe and all that cheers